Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a somewhat intriguing and I guess somewhat unusual concept of a black hole that's actually made from light. Or I guess technically from energy. An idea sometimes referred to as Kugelblitz, which is German for ball lightning. But before we discuss this concept a little bit more, let's take a few seconds to discuss the father of black holes, John Wheeler. Wheeler was an extremely influential theoretical physicist who essentially came up with the term black hole. And to scientists like Stephen Hawking, a huge inspiration, and he even referred to him as a hero of the black hole story. He was also responsible for essentially starting an enormous pursuit in astrophysics in regards to black holes and a lot of phenomena proposed by Einstein, but he was also responsible for coming up with a lot of other ideas and making propositions about other intriguing phenomena. For example, quantum foam. That's technically also his creation as well, and basically explains the universe as a kind of a bubbly surface that's constantly changed by various quantum particles appearing and disappearing. We also refer to this as quantum fluctuations. And even things like wormholes were technically his proposition as well. But intriguingly, as he was studying the idea of black holes, he also realized that technically, since this is just an extreme curvature of space-time and can be actually caused by something else, we should be able to produce similar effects by using energy. And so back in the days he proposed a concept known as geon, essentially a gravitational wave held together by its own energy. It's technically an acronym for Gravitational Electromagnetic Entity. And in terms of math, it actually made a lot of sense. As a matter of fact, it was just as likely as a black hole. But when he proposed this, nobody knew black holes were actually real. Yet now we do, and so that basically brings us to the question, can geons exist as well? Well, eventually the physicists worked out that a geon would be very unstable. And because of this instability, it would most likely collapse. But actually collapse into its own version of a black hole that contains an extreme density or extreme concentration of heat, light and radiation right in the middle. As a matter of fact, so intense that it forms its own event horizon, trapping its own energy inside. And well, that concept is now referred to as that ball of lightning, or technically Kugelblitz, a very bizarre phenomenon where technically, if enough energy is focused in the center, it literally forms an event horizon, forming a black hole in a very different way. Which is of course a unique way for black holes to form, and that's of course very different from the usual way, which requires mass. And though obviously mass and energy are equivalent, according to Einstein, in this case we're talking about literally just the light itself producing a black hole just because there is too much light inside. And because light doesn't need to have mass, it means that you're producing something without mass just by using photons. And so when this was proposed, it was a very intriguing concept, and even today it's still unclear if these actually exist. As a matter of fact, it would be very difficult to establish if we're looking at an actual black hole or some kind of a Kugelblitz that resembles a black hole from the outside. And that's until this new paper that you can find in the description that basically tells us one thing. They're probably impossible. And the reasoning behind this statement is actually pretty solid. But here we have to understand something else first. When Wheeler originally proposed these, we actually didn't know much about black holes, and specifically, nobody ever applied quantum effects to these very bizarre objects. And so in this case, geons proposed by Wheeler are essentially purely gravitational or Einsteinian objects that did not have anything described in terms of quantum physics. But a few decades later, Stephen Hawking actually realized that black holes very likely do have quantum effects and thus evaporate, producing what we now refer to as Hawking radiation. And though Hawking himself also proposed that maybe we could use these geons or these Kugelblitzes as a way to actually create interstellar engines for future starships, he never really considered certain other quantum effects that are extremely similar to the Hawking radiation, but actually produced as a result of electromagnetic energy. And so in this new study, the researchers realized that, well, when you actually have so much light or so much energy condensed into such a tiny spot, something else starts happening here based on a famous effect known as the Schwinger effect. A very unusual phenomenon where you suddenly actually get electrons and positrons appear in the middle of nowhere, forming spontaneously in the presence of powerful electric fields. 
And so, for example, near some kind of a powerful neutron star, we expect these powerful electromagnetic fields to produce electrons and positrons from empty space. And that's actually very similar to that quantum fluctuation, except that in this case, we're observing the formation of electrons and positrons. And as they're produced, they basically consume some of this electric energy, which ends up in the conservation of the electric charge. And various studies have previously been able to measure all of this in things like, for example, graphene, or have even detected some of these effects from various distant neutron stars. And so basically we know that this effect exists. But what does this have to do with the Geon or the Kugelblitz? Well, inside of these unusual objects, we basically expect enormous energies. Some calculations have suggested power outputs of 129 petawatts, or essentially thousands of Hiroshima bombs going off every second. And when you have so much energy in such a small, small space, this basically results in electromagnetism that's going to start producing this Schwinger effect pretty much right away. And so by having such a powerful field inside of this object, all of these electrons and positrons appearing spontaneously will continuously steal the energy away from the object because of this Schwinger effect. And the calculations in this study basically make it pretty clear that all of these particles and antiparticles would very likely start escaping these geons in such high numbers that it's actually going to prevent geons from condensing further or the black hole from forming. And so in other words, this research suggests that it's impossible to produce Kugelblitzes in the way they're described in theoretical studies. Because as soon as you try to produce as much energy in such a single spot, the Schwinger effect takes over, dramatically reducing total energy and not allowing black holes to form. And in this case, they were able to calculate this for really small objects or for very large ones. And no matter the size, it's impossible to form a black hole because the Schwinger effect is just way too powerful. With maybe just one exception, the early universe. In the first few moments of the universe, or basically like one millionth of a second, there was maybe a possibility to form some Kugelblitzes as some of the early energy collapsed and produced primordial black holes. But these primordial black holes have not been discovered yet, so nobody actually knows what happened during this time, and we obviously have no idea if any Kugelblitzes formed during this time either. But if they did form, they would look exactly like black holes look today. And so in that sense, I guess we might never know. But what we do know now is that it looks like in the modern universe, or I guess in a universe in the last 13.8 billion years, it would have been impossible for these unusual objects to form, suggesting that it's basically going to remain a hypothetical concept and nothing else. Which of course also means that that idea from Stephen Hawking about powering spaceships with this is also unlikely to ever happen. Although there might still be some hope, because some of the observations from certain GRBs or gamma ray bursts might have been coming from certain Kugelblitzes. Now that's obviously still very hypothetical, and we're not going to know for sure if conditions inside these collapsing stars can produce Kugelblitzes, but at the moment, especially because of this paper, the answer still seems to be no. So even gamma ray bursts are unlikely to involve Kugelblitzes and are still extremely likely to just have black holes produced by collapsing stars. And so at least for now, this is most likely just going to remain a hypothesis, or just technically a thought experiment, and will never go beyond that either. And mostly because the explanations in this study are extremely clear at pointing out that Kugelblitzes are just impossible. But nevertheless, these are still really exciting concepts, especially when it comes to trying to discover some of these primordial black holes, which one day we could maybe use as some kind of an energy source. You can actually learn about some of these concepts in one of the videos in the description. And so once we discover something else or someone else proposes something super cool about black holes, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.